Could you share with us some of the highlights of this year's Women League Championship? First of all, we have been um, we have been doing already four races. I think the technically speaking, we're talking about the pit boost, mm -hmm. which is uh, the most important property that we're showcasing uh, this year. It's basically a pit stop uh, related to uh, energy. So there is um, the car stop, then it receives uh, a charge in 30 seconds of a 10% of the total battery, which is a, a technology that is unheard of. Cars are now uh, four wheel drive by, by activated the front power train. So definitely only learn a complete different animal uh, compared to last year car. You know, the car today does zero to 100 kilometers in 1.8 seconds. To give you a little bit of context, uh, that is 30% uh, faster than any other world championship uh, of, uh, of the, the FIA. I want to talk about the technology transfer. We, we know that the FE is the EV lab. So can you tell us one specific tech, racing tech we have already seen in consumers' cars? And I think what you just touched based on, on something that is really important for us, you know, when, when my business partner Alejandro and myself decided to, to do Formula E was one of the main reasons was basically because we felt like uh, motorsport wasn't helping the vehicles industry anymore. For us, it was a kind of a very easy decision. Basically, let's just stop focusing on, on aerodynamics because there are many other championships that, that, that they're just focused on that. Let's focus on what it really it will have an impact on the cars on, on the streets, you know, and that is the powertrain, you know. So we did, basically we did uh, together with FIA, a championship in which the regulations uh, allows, not allows, but incentivize you to work and invest more in, um, in, in the powertrain. So, so there is nothing as efficient as a, a Formula E motor today. Um, the region capabilities of this car, that you, I don't know if you know, but produces 40% of the energy that consumes while it's racing, yes. which is, you know, unbelievable. So all these stats are really important and they come from a, a massive development that the manufacturers have done. And today, companies like Jaguar, companies like Nissan, the Nissan Leaf today is 380% more efficient than what it was 10 years ago. I have plenty of examples in, in, in Jaguar, in Porsche, in, mm -hmm. you know, all the manufacturers that have been or are involved in Formula E, they, all they develop, it's transfer to, uh, to, to the cars that they sell to the people, which is the, 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 the key element, the most important thing. Well, our Chinese EV fans are also wondering, are there any Chinese companies uh, currently in talks to join the Formula E, whether as, you know, as a work team or as technology supporter, battery supplier? No. The first team in the history that we had in Formula E was a Chinese team called Team China. They actually won the first championship. Yes. They, 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 were, they, they are the first world champion of Formula E, yeah. Uh, then we had uh, another car manufacturer called NIO, which is, obviously you know perfectly well. Uh, and uh, I cannot tell you, but we are discussing with quite a few different OEMs in, in China. We are sitting here today in Shanghai, what I consider the home of uh, electrification, you know, the home of uh, electric mobility. and. Uh, Definitely, we want to have more Chinese DNA. We're discussing with quite a few today. Hopefully, you know, we will get uh, one in the short term. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Xiaomi's SU7 course, Ultra. Yeah. It broke the record uh, in Nürburgring. Nürburgring. Our fans wants to know that, is there any chance we can see it either as a safety car or a racing car on the track? Uh, introduce me to them. I mean, definitely 100% we will be willing uh, mm -hmm. to have someone like uh, Xiaomi in the championship, BYD. I mean, there are many top, top, top manufacturers, you know, in, uh, in China that it would be an honor uh, to, to have them in, uh, in the Formula E grid. Definitely, we, there, is, there are some discussions happening. You know, I cannot tell you again with whom, but, but uh, there are some discussions happening and hopefully we will, uh, we will close it uh, very, very soon. Wow, great. I'm glad to hear that also <laughs> as a fan myself. I just attended the Formula One last week and uh, beside of the race, we also got a lot of diverse events happening in the Shanghai circuit and also around this area. So do you have the same plan to like spread the popularity of this FE sport among Chinese audiences? De definitely. I think uh, I don't understand uh, motorsport without entertainment. Uh, race is probably the, the pinnacle, the, the you know the, the cheer, 
uh, on the uh, on the cake, but it's not the only thing. And, and for us, it's so important that uh, we have EDM concerts, that we have a big activation of global partners and local partners into the race, uh, that the people can come and have fun, uh, uh, you know, all day long. And, and actually a wider range of ages as well, a uh, wider range in terms of uh, of gender as well. I don't know if you know, but 50% of our fans are actually uh, female, 49%, uh, which is uh, fantastic. And, and uh, as you can imagine, that, that's something that 10 years ago was uh, hard to believe, that, um, that a motorsport uh, was predominantly a male sport. And uh, today we're changing the trend. Strawberry Chase is already like 15, 20 years younger than uh, any other form of motorsport. Uh, the, we're growing, you know, Formula A since uh, year one to, to today. We're just starting uh, the season 11. Uh, last year we grew 25% um, the audience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's uh, an impressive uh, impressive number to the point that we are the fastest uh, growing motorsport in the world today. Um, and uh, and uh, we can only grow. That's, you know, the sky is the limit. Thank you. Thank you for Thank taking you this interview. Oh, one much. last personal question. Sure. Do you also an EV user yourself? Of course. Ah, which EV you drive? Of course. I have uh, an i3, uh, BMW i3. I have a BMW X5, um, which is um, mm -hmm. hybrid, not uh, fully electric. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, at home, we have a, a fully electric Cinquecento Fiat. A Fiat. Oh. Yeah. And uh, the fourth one is uh, a Mini, a Mini Cooper, fully electric as well. For... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually. Can I say that? Oh, no, that's not for me. That's, oh. that's my wife, my kids. I'm, oh, yeah. and, and for me, it's the X5. Yeah, classic X5. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.